Okay, not sure how good this is gonna be able to be seen, but we'll try it and see if it works. This is my palette, and all of these little dots are the different colors of dye-based inks. And this just happens to be the brand that I'm using because I found these 12 colors where I had bought them years ago. I had the ink pads. The ink pads got ruined, so they got trashed. And I thought, well, why not use them as watercolors? So, that's what I'm going to do. So, this is, I've done just a little sketch. Hopefully, you can kind of see some of my lines. Sometimes I do a sketch. Sometimes I just eyeball it. It just really depends on what I'm doing. And then, this is on watercolor paper. You've got to have the, the watercolor paper or some kind of uh, paper that's going to let you move the color around once you put it on there. If you put it on dry paper or just on cardstock and there's no moisture, it's not going to move for you. So I put the water on where I know I want the, the clouds or the sky to be and kind of leave the clouds open. Then I pick up just a little bit and all you have to barely do is touch into this color put it on the brush, and then just start moving it around, leaving my space for my, my clouds um, to be there because you can't go back and add the, the clouds if you paint it all blue, unless, of course, you went back over it with some sort of paint. And I have not experimented that far yet, so I don't know how well this would mix into or with any kind of like acrylic paint over the top of it, but that's just kind of how I, I get them there. And then this is just to kind of scuff up the edges a little bit. And that was, I think, cerulean blue. And I'm going to take just a barely, just a little touch of Prussian and put across the top and I had to rinse the excess out of the brush because it's so strong and dark and all I want to do is just kind of add a little shading to the the top of my sky and then I bring a little bit down under the clouds just to kind of give them a, a little bit of a, a bottom and that pretty much is it as far as the the sky and the clouds. And I can't really work into my little mountain area right now because that is still so wet. So I'm going to attempt to do what hopefully might look like some little distant cedar trees. That's what my goal was with doing the little jagged line instead of just making it look like random treetops. And we'll start out with the lighter green. I think it's called chartreuse, if that's how it's pronounced. And I'm just going to dab up into the, the little tree line tops with just the least little bit of the color. And then kind of follow a little bit of the shape that I put there. And I, I keep the brush moving because I put, hopefully, enough water on the paper to to give me some workable time and some open time. And I want to kind of bring some of that down and, and set it down on a, its own little plane. Then I'm going to take a little bit of, I think it's called sap moss green and I generally do this I turn the piece upside down so that I'm working with my my water coming toward me and we'll put in a little of this darker green and I don't want to it's such a strong green I don't want too much in the brush at one time And then I just want to kind of blend it up into my little tree line. Now what I do with these paintings actually has no right or no wrong. This is just me doing what 
I see in my mind's eye. That was something I was taught a long time ago as far as painting is paint what you see in, in your own mind. And so that's kind of what I do. A lot of my little farm and barn scenes are, are basically just that. They're just what I see when I think about the, the different landscape scenes from living in the country. And what I'm doing now is just base coating in, these are what I call my sunflowers. And you'll notice they don't have like petals and all that kind of stuff because after I get through adding all of the the little do-nothing greenery around it, you're not going to see a whole lot of what's there. This is just to give you a visual. We have a couple of farmers in the area that they grow little patches of sunflowers on their farms at the, the edges of, of some of their crops and whatnot, and they just are absolutely gorgeous. And so that's just kind of my version of doing that. So to do the, the little fence posts, I give myself a little wash of water so that I can move my brown paint around. And it doesn't take much. One thing, this particular dye-based ink is very intense in color. So it doesn't take much to, to give you enough of a staining that, that your color's going to be there. And that was done with the, I think it's what, Van Dyke Brown. And then this is, I think this one was called Payne's Gray. And all I'm going to do is use just a little bit to, I call it my fence post tops or the cap on the top of the fence post. First art lessons I ever took were in oils, and that's what our art teacher referred to them as when she taught us how to paint a fence post. She said, you have to put its cap on. So that's what it's always been for me. Okay. So now let's see if we can put this little distant looking mountain in here. And bring some of that color right down into there. Hmm, and that's going to be my problem is trying to decide what color mountainous look I want to have. This is. I can't think of the name of the purple. Damson purple, I believe it is. So it's kind of like a, a plummy purple. I don't think I had quite enough water already on the paper. So let's see if we can add some more water. And I add the water in very small amounts so that I can control where this color is actually going to go. And then we'll pick up a little more of the, the actual color on the brush. And hopefully, it will then give us a little movement of color there. for it not doing what I was wanting it to do when I first put the color down, it's 
actually looking pretty good. So I'm going to try something. And if this messes up, the only thing I've lost really is a tiny little piece of watercolor paper. What I did is I went and picked up just a touch of yellow on the brush to kind of give a glow behind the tree line and at the base of the, the mountainous look. Lost a little bit of the edge of that tree, so we'll see if we can sneak him back in there with just a touch of paint. Well, I call it paint. It's actually re-inker ink, but it's been fun playing with it, so I, I like what I'm what I'm getting from it. Okay, now let's go on and do this right here. And I like to kind of refer to my area around the the little fence posts that I do is like the the field that maybe the the farmer has planted and maybe in hay or something like that. So I put try to put a color that can make represent that. It's hard to stay out of those little sunflower flowers when I get them actually close to the edge. And hopefully some of this is making sense and I hope it can be seen. If not, I will work on another one later, but I thought I would try to throw this one together. Okay, now we'll let that dry and we will, as I call it, reinforce the fence post. And what I'm doing is just putting a little bit of that brown on one side so that it kind of creates my shaded side and then I don't really have to do anything to highlight it because the other side is lighter. It's just taking the least little touch of the ink and putting on one side I used to do this with rubber stamped images. I used to demo and I used to use the dye based reinkers to paint in rubber stamped images. And a lot of times we would emboss them rather than just stamp them so we didn't have to worry too much about our lines bleeding because we had those black lines of our stamped image to keep everything separated. Okay, and here I am just putting in the greenery around the flowers because if the flowers weren't there first, I couldn't go back and add the add them on top so I have to put them in first and then just kind of scoot the green around and I put the yellow on there very strong so that if I lose any of the edges because of the green hopefully enough of it is still there that you still get the 
illusion that it's a sunflower. And two, you'll notice I did not wet this area. Because I'm using enough water in the brush and just barely touching into the green dye that there's enough moisture to move the, the dye around. See, I'm wanting to call it paint. <laughs> move the paint around as you're, as you're working it. it upside down. If you were worried about getting into this, you could lay a piece of paper over it. Hopefully I won't have a boo-boo here trying to show you and I can... Sometimes I can see my bottom edge better when I actually turn it upside down and work on it than trying to work on it right side up. Because I want Get a little bit of dark down there at that bottom. Okay. Now, while that sets up a little bit, then I'm going to take this red color and right in the center of each of my sunflowers, I'm going to put this red. And the reason I use the red is because what little bit of mixing it's going to do into the yellow that's already there, it gives me the flower center illusion that I'm after. And I just think the way it kind of splays out looks good so I just choose to do it in red and if you lose some of the strength of any of them you can go back and just really carefully dot more of it in there and let's see this was a little wet so we lost some of that area right there so we'll add a little bit of color and then just take some water and kind of move it around a little bit. But I kind of like that. It's pretty cool. Okay, then I'm going to take the full strength yellow again. And on our hay field, I'm going to wash this yellow over that little base color that we made. I just mix some yellow and to make that orangey looking color and then this kind of gives the glow to the, the little field back there and like I said this is just my interpretation of what I see in my mind's eye so there's there's so much room for so many more things that can be done with this, that this is just what I do. Do that. Okay. Now I'm going to take a little bit of that dark green color and come back in here and I'm not really painting leaves, but I kind of give the illusion of maybe some big old sunflower leaves by just doing little dabs with the brush. I don't fill it in real solid. I just do enough to create some movement and kind of keep the eye moving around the, the little picture. Try to get enough dark that it balances out with some of the light in the foreground. There, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay. 
okay because I've got a few few little areas of the green that are wanting to bleed up I'm gonna come in here with just a little bit of brown and kind of create a little shadow at the bottom of the field I do this just little bits at the time so that it I don't overpower it and end up with more brown than what I wanted to have there. Oops. And hopefully this is, like I said, where you can see it. But I was trying to do a small enough little painting that you could see the, the whole gist of it. And the other thing I like about the... Um, doing these little quick painted cards is because they are so quick and, and easy to do. And like I said, this was only a set of, I think it was 12 colors um, that went with the about one of each ink pad and one of each re-inker and probably didn't use the ink pads half a dozen times they didn't have the best packaging and so I think that's what led to them not holding up but I had my re so when I found them the other day I just something about the vividness of these colors and I was like how cool is that? So, and to add a little more strength to the this next layer of shading here that I'm doing on the fence post, I actually put a touch of the paint's gray and the Van Dyke brown on the brush at one time. And then I like to give my light side just a little bit of a glow on the, the wooden post. By just a touch of yellow on the brush. And then run it over that edge. Let's see if we can get a little shadow behind this post. Lord won't take it over right there. I think this one needs just a touch too. Okay, I'm thinking this is getting close to being done. The this would have to be completely dry, though, before I go back and do any of the black detail work. And you can do the black detail work with something as simple as just one of the, the Micron pens or like a Zig pen. I have used Sharpies. They're just not my favorite to do. This is my favorite little pen to use. But what I had done on the others is I actually took a calligraphy tip and this bottle of the, the black India ink, and after everything was dry, then everywhere I wanted to do any little detail, which was mostly accenting the the posts and then doing the, to look like the little faux barbed wire, that's what I would go back and do with this. But the, the ATCs I was doing the other day, I was running and drying them with the hair dryer, but since I don't have time to do that, that's just the gist of what you can do with the re-anchor inks.